Uh, so please stand by. Uh, again, the question is that if your mouth, your heart, causes you to sin, based upon what the Lord Jesus Christ said about if your right hand, your right eye causes you to sin or right foot, uh, you know, to cut it off, we are not cutting, but the question is, are we going to resist? So from the passage we have read, uh, reading specifically regarding uh, this in verse 4, it says, But let it be the hidden man of the heart, in that which is not corruptible. So, or verse 3, rather, whose adorning, let it not be the outward adorning of plating the hair and of wearing of gold and of putting on apparel. All of this is just something that it's done to show off. It's like God is saying, don't let it be the outward uh, exposure of, oh yes, my hair, my eyes, my uh, this thing. But, and uh, what do we do? So the same uh, question or the answer we have here is related to another passage we have in Jeremiah and also Ezekiel. So uh, while we have question seven as uh, something that God, uh, we are asking ourselves, we want to tie in with question seven, uh, question eight. If God wants women not to follow the evil practices of Again, let's hear the word prostitutes in ancient days by painting their faces and eyes and red and lips red or purple, but the women ignore it and end up in hellfire. You know, so when we say, Why do we say all these things? And it's because it's been done in the ancient days in the old testament. When it says eyes, enlarging the eyes. Enlarging the eye is something that has been practiced long, long ago, which is done everywhere. Fake eyelashes, fake eyebrows, fake all of these things, but the Christian woman is so much involved with it, and then the lips have to be red. Why? Why do they have to do all these things? Is it not activity of the prostitute? Jeremiah 4.30. Let's see what uh, God's word is saying there. Jeremiah 4.30 Jeremiah chapter 4 the verse Jeremiah chapter 4 verse 10 Jeremiah chapter 4 verse 10 And when you are planted, what will you do? Though you clothe yourself with crimson, though you adorn yourself with ornaments of gold, though you enlarge your eyes with paint, in vain you will make yourself fair. Your lovers will despise you. Amen. They will seek your life. Amen. So we see that. Then Ezekiel 23, 40. So when we say enlarge the face, and enlarging the face is enlarging, uh, you know, the eyes. And it's all about painting, how people, they paint, you know, extra. Then it makes the eye bigger. I don't know why they have to do that, but uh, it's all, uh, you know, the activity of the prostitute. But we also Ezekiel find that. chapter 23, 40. The best. Ezekiel 23, verse 40. Ezekiel 23, verse 40. I read. Furthermore, you send for men to come from afar, to whom a messenger was sent, and there they came, and you washed yourself for them, 
painted your eyes and adorned yourself with ornament. Amen. Amen. All right, Amen. let's go to our Second Kings 9.30. So that we read all at once instead of uh, stopping and go. Second Kings 9.30. Second Kings chapter 9. Second case chapter nine. Thirty. Now when Jehu had come to Jezreel. Jezebel heard of it, and she put paint on her eyes, and adorned her head, and looked through a window. Amen. 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 Uh, one more before we go. So what is the point of all of this? And the point of Jezebel was that she was trying to entice. She was trying to, uh, you know, to look sexy, so that when Jehu came in, Jehu will not be able to... Will, will forget what she was, uh, he was coming to do. Jehu was coming to kill everybody because of the immorality that she and her family had done. But she felt that, oh, well, if I paint my face, if I do, do all these things, and it is a life of prostitutes. But Christians have adopted it, thinking that, oh, this is uh, the right thing. I, I'm just looking good and all of that. May God help us. Uh, let us go to Isaiah. If that is not enough, see what Isaiah the prophet is saying. Chapter 3. Isaiah All right, let's stand to hear this. This is long, too, so let's stand to hear Isaiah. Chapter 3, 16 to 24. And please, let's pay attention to each of the words that is being said, or the labels that Isaiah 3. Isaiah chapter 3, reading from verse 16 to 24. 16. Moreover, the Lord says, Because the daughters of Zion are haughty and walk with outstretched necks and wanton eyes, walking and mincing as they go, making a jangling with their feet. 17. Therefore, the Lord will strive with a scalp, the crown of the head of the daughters of Zion, and the Lord will uncover the secret parts. 18. In that day, the Lord will take away the finery, the jangling anklets, the scarves, and the crescents, the pendant, and the pendant, the bracelets, and the veils, the headdresses the leg ornaments and the headbands, the perfume boxes, the charms and the rings, the loose jewels, the festal apparel and the mantle, the outer garments, the purses and the mirrors, the fine linen, the turbans and the robes, 24, and so it shall be. Instead of a sweet smell, there will be a stench. Instead of a sash, a robe. Instead of well-set hair, baldness. Instead of a rich robe, a gilding of sackcloth. And branded instead of beauty. Amen. Amen. So we can see what God is saying that. Let us be seated. Thank you. Uh, there are things that we do. When God is, these are, should I say, fashionable things. Any fashion that we put on, uh, we may say it's not fashion, it's, it's, that's how a woman dress, that's how a man dresses, you know. And this has been on for a long, it's nothing, it's nothing new. It's been done in ancient days. And God has condemned it all throughout. But, uh, Aren't we stubborn? Aren't we uh, resisting? Aren't we full of uh, excuses? 
Oh, because, oh, well, I have to do it. I have to put on red lipstick. Why? I have to, you know, uh, scrape my God-given, you know, hair on my, on my face and put a mark, just like people do on TV, all the, uh, the, the women in the, on the TV in the this thing, and they have to uh, perfect uh, this thing, and then uh, you have to attach, uh, you know, <sighs> Lord have mercy, why? I mean, I know I'm not the uh, first preacher and I'm not going to be the last preacher uh, to say this, but it has been on. God wants to bless us. God wants us to enjoy better things. God wants us to have all the blessings. Remember what we read in Deuteronomy. It says, if you diligently obey and follow all the things, you, know, you are going to be the head. You will have fruitful. You are going to have all. There will not be sickness and disease and famines and all of it. It won't come to your house because you obey. But we have excuses. And so let us not say that it's just uh, the women. It's, it's the men, too, are involved. The men encourage all these things, and they say, oh, well, uh, my wife has to look good, my this thing, and then they are both you know, guilty. And so let us, and sometimes we say, oh, well, I'll let my wife dress the way uh, she wants. Yes, of course, uh, you cannot force uh, the wife, but then... The question is that, where is it going to end? If the Lord Jesus Christ says, your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out. Your right leg taking you to where you're not supposed to go, cut it off. Your right arm is making you do, do you know, take it off. And we refuse. So, again, these are things, and from what we read in the, uh, uh, Isaiah the prophet, the next question or comment applies. Question 9. If God wants women not to adorn themselves with high heels, shoes, earrings, chains, and bracelets, but they excuse themselves because they want to look good, but end up in hellfire, what do we do? Why do we have to wear heels, long heels? And I have been very, very surprised that some of our young women have brought heels, long heels, and I, I said, oh, Lord have mercy. The devil has succeeded, but he has not fully succeeded. We are going to uh, continue to be victorious and pray that these things will stop. I have seen, not, I mean, young women coming in with long heels. And I said, is it, is it something from a state or is it something that is everywhere? And it's everywhere. So why? It's because the prostitutes have infiltrated every society, every area. And they tell us that women have to dress that way. Women have to uh, scrape all these things and put on artificial things. Otherwise, they are not. Uh, acceptable in society, and they have bought it. May God reverse all of these things because these are all satanic things that is uh, infiltrating and making us all feel that, oh, yes, and we've all accepted it. No, we will not accept it. We will not accept. And so um, we need to ask God to help us so that God will help us. Question 10. If we believe that God says all liars will end up in the lake of fire, but yet we continue doing it and end up in the lake of fire, you know, what are we saying? What are we doing? It's there in God's word. It says, you know, Revelation 21. It is not, and sometimes we give excuses. It's, it's a yellow lie. It's a green lie. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's a white lie. It's a brown lie. And we excuse that it's just a little bit. 
it's a little bit of lie. So it's not uh, a big lie. So uh, give us a break. It's just it's just a small lie that we lie. Revelation 21, 8 says, But the fearful and unbelieving, those two are going to the lake of fire. You know, it's, 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 a, it's a sure banker. And the abominable, you know, those who are, we all know, those are going. And the murderers, they are going there. And the whoremonger, the prostitutes, all of those, they are going there. The sorcerers, you know, those magicians, those, uh, uh, you know, uh, what do you call it? Sorcery. Magicians and all of those who are involved with it, and uh, idolaters, they are going there, you know. But the, the last verse is, and liars. So, and it says, and all liars, it doesn't say son, it said, and, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which uh, burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. It is there. So we have to start recognizing the fact that God's word, and we believe that, yes, all liars are going to go. If we believe God says all liars will end up in the lake of fire, then why do we continue doing it? We used to lie. We see what the Apostle Paul said, you know, to the church at Corinth. He says, well, some of this, you used to do this in before, but now you've been washed, you've been justified, you've been cleansed. Why do we continue in the sin which we know God says we shouldn't do? Question 11, if our Lord Jesus Christ reminds us that if our most important body, part, the right eye, the right foot, the right leg, or the causes us to commit sin, and that it is better to cut it off than for the whole body to end up in hell, why do we excuse ourselves of the importance of this great commandment? that we send so many people to the lake of fire? Great question. And it goes back to Mark 5, 42 to 49, which we've already read before. Question 12. If God's commandment in Galatians 5, 16 to 21, that those who commit the listed sins will not enter the kingdom of God, why do we ignore those? Why do we excuse and say, oh, well, uh, this is this. These are serious sins. These are sins that there is no escape for them. They are taking people straight to the lake of fire. 